Here we are in Perry on a beautiful summer's day, reenacting Pasteur's experiment of the germ theory. <laughs> the first step was boiling the broth and sanitizing the cups. Make sure you turn off the stove. I almost forgot. That would be bad. The direction. The next step in our experiment is to pour the broth into these different cups and then put a lid on them with two different straws. One bent to make it hard for the germs to come in and one with easy access for the germs. Now we let it sit for days and days. Well, it is another beautiful day in Pervy. But you cannot tell because, well, we are inside. But you can tell it's been a couple of days because... I mean this one, Jacques. But anyways, these are the two cups after five days of waiting. This is the cup with the contaminated broth, with the straight straw so that all these germs can come in. And this is the cup with the uncontaminated broth and the bindi straw so that no germs can come in. However, there was a flaw in our experiment where the straw did not quite fit in the hole in the cup, so a couple of germs got in. Now to show you the cups. The clean one, the dirty one. Here is the bottom of the cups, the clean one, the dirty one. Ew. As you can see, the experiment worked because the cup with the bendy straw all of the germs got trapped right here and did not enter the broth. But the cup with the straight straw, all of the germs went straight into the broth and contaminated it. Thank you for watching our reenactment of Pasteur's experiment of the germ theory. This disproves spontaneous generation, thus creating the germ theory. The discovery of the germ theory led to pasteurization, named after Pasteur himself. It also helped in the creation of vaccines. This made it easier to prevent diseases. Thank you for watching, and until next time.